Good morning. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. As you'll see, I'm not on the farm this morning. I'm actually in the office. Anyway, this week's video, uh, we're going to look back at our old 3085. Now, previously we looked at all 17 tractors on the farm, which was a huge success. Uh, we looked at why they were there, uh, the jobs that they did, some brief history on the tractors and some and future plans for some of the tractors. I think you guys uh, really enjoyed that, really enjoyed the history part of it and the background to the tractors. And I wanted to thank you so much for your support, especially if you uh, liked, subbed or commented on those videos. One tractor that got a mention uh, in those videos, which is no longer here, is of course the 3085. So this video, we're going to look at our old 3085, why it came to the farm, what it did when it was on the farm, but most importantly, why it left the farm. As a collector of Massey Ferguson equipment and tractors, why would you let one go? Well, this video will explain that. And it's, it's a tractor that my father will definitely not want to see back on the farm. I do have some fond memories of, of driving and working with the 3085, uh, but, uh, and I do have a soft spot for the 3000 series. Um, however, um, yeah, it's not a, it's not a, a, a tractor my father will want back. So that's it, let's get stuck into the video. Right, before the 3085 uh, arrived on the farm in late 2007, we only had three tractors on the farm. We had the 590, which was used for cutting silage with the uh, five foot uh, farm mower, um, carton bales and baling with the small bales or crazy bales, whatever you whatever you want to call them. We also had the uh, three cylinder 35, which you've seen a few weeks ago on the video. And we had the also had the 35 four cylinder. So we only had really those three working tractors. Uh, the little tractors, the, the little 35, say down the hay bobbing, cutting weeds, uh, rolling, sewing, etc. The slurry, because we did have the cubicle house then, the slurry was uh, done by my uncle. He had a 390T, he still does, and 1100 gallon tanker, and he was able to come and, and take out the slurry. But it's the, the, the big bales were getting bigger and we, we kind of needed to, to, uh, to upgrade and we needed something with a bit more horsepower uh, and four wheel drive was a must for the slopes. So, uh, so we started to look at uh, a couple of uh, options. So what did we look at? We looked at a Fiat 11090 and uh, this tractor was at a local dealer's and to be honest, it needed a little bit of work. Well, I'll say a little bit, a fair bit. Uh, the clutch was gone on it. There was a couple of other little things and it had very bad tires on it. Um, we also looked at the 3085, which uh, was in uh, Michael Derry's yard. And I think I've inserted a photograph over here. Uh, and that's it actually sitting in Michael Derry's yard the day we went to see it. And that was the way back in, I think September 07. So uh, that you can see from, from, the, uh, from the photograph that it's a pretty straight old tractor, a bit of rust around the doors, etc. But you know, it's, it's decent tires it was driving and it was the same money as the, uh, the Fiat. So it's kind of an no-brainer. And uh, the deal was done for the 3085. Now, the tractor came in December uh, of that year and it came with a full set of weights but there was no there was no uh, jobs for it on the farm at that time of the year and in fairness to Michael Derry's they postponed the warranty on the tractor because the tractor came with a, a three I think a three month warranty or something uh, and they postponed that until the summer and in the summer when it rolled out the shed uh, say maybe April time, May time, that's when it kicked off and, and that was quite decent of them to be fair. Um, so yeah, May June it rolled out and uh, went straight to work. Right, one of the 
first jobs that the uh, the, the tractor uh, had um, was carting bales around the farm. Um, and that was kind of the first job I did when I rolled out the shed. We then used the tractor to go to another farm. Uh, another farmer um, was selling bales and in, in those days we didn't have the extra land so we had to buy in extra bales. To get there you had to uh, go up a rather steep hill and that hill had a gradient of about 12% um, and myself and my brother set off uh, in both tractors. I was in 3085 of course and he was in the old 590. Now the trailers, we both had six bale trailers on, you can see from some of the photos here and the uh, halfway up the hill uh, he went past me like I was parked there and I just couldn't believe how dead the um, 3085 actually was and that was his first real um, road test and as far as my father was concerned it was the first nail in the coffin for the 3085. Um, when we got to the field uh, and we started loading the bales I was chatting to my father and my brother and my father had been behind in the jeep and um, with the small trailer on, he maybe going to bring a couple of bales on that. And he said, what happened to you on the, on, on the way up there? Were you, did you miss a gear or something? I was like, no, I didn't miss a gear. I was literally, you know, dropping down the gears and driving at the fast as I could get it to go. So uh, yeah, we all actually couldn't believe just how pokey the 590 was compared to the 3085. Um, and on the way back then from there, uh, on the last load I decided to take a shortcut and instead of going the long way down which is not as steep I took the, the steep route and um, yeah schoolboy here the brakes failed on the tractor and I had to pull on the handbrake uh, to try and get her slowed up on, on the hill and uh, it was definitely a squeaky bum uh, situation uh, with six round bales on the back and you're really just a passenger at that stage you are pump on the brakes, see if you can get anything out of them, they're right to the floor, you have the handbrake on which is going to burn out in no time and uh, yeah, you're just you're just steering the tractor to uh, make sure you keep it between the hedges and hopefully you get to the bottom. So uh, yeah, that was another black mark against the 3085, that was two in one day and first impressions, first impressions last and yeah, my father definitely was not impressed with the, the 3085. So in the, the spring of uh, 2009, we uh, hauled the tractor in to uh, look at the brakes and uh, fix some of the rust issues that uh, were on the doors, etc. And uh, the brakes, um, the brakes were done when we took the trumpet housings off. The brakes actually weren't worn. Uh, there was a bit of wear, but when you're in that far, you're always going to uh, do the, the the work. So the brakes were done, and uh, all the tin, all the rotten tin work was uh, cut out, uh, and that included uh, parts of the doors, uh, parts of the cab, etc. And my father, he made new parts to. Uh, uh, fabricated new sections for doors etc and, and, and welded them uh, uh, back in there as I say parts of the cab were also uh, cut out and replaced and uh, my brother resprayed the wheels and all the tin work was uh, resprayed so that was the tractor um, looking quite well after that it was, uh, it was like a new tractor really uh, having been completely resprayed when the tractor came back out uh, one of the first jobs that, it, well actually it was the first job because it was ex it was the next day. Um, first job after respraying uh, in uh, March, April, uh, was it 2010 did I say, 29, 2010 it was, um, was to uh, take a load of scrap to the uh, local scrap dealer. And uh, we filled up the old Fraser trailer right to the brim uh, and it was a sideways trailer back then uh, you now know the trailer from the channel it's the uh, drop side trailer but back then it was a sideways trailer it was 
clean wrong to be quite honest and the sides on the top of the trailer now are the sides that are that are used for the uh, tipping trailer uh, but back then it was the, the monocoque trailer which i mentioned in in, a, in the previous video and in fairness probably should have left the old fraser there because as i say it was absolutely wrong um but after tipping the load of scrap off in the scrap yard there was a serious amount of oil started pouring out of the, the tractor and uh, I thought at that point that something had happened to return pipe or something. Um, having checked the oil, I was able to drive it back home. It turned out that there was wear in the joint where the uh, handbrake goes into the top of the uh, gearbox. So it goes in and it, when you pull the handbrake it rotates but it had worn and it was like a rugby ball shape rather than a, a circle and the seal had, had gone in it. Um, and this is, I don't know how it was, the oil was escaping, but there must be a return pipe inside. It was splashing and coming out there. Uh, so the oil was escaping there. And uh, what we did is we hauled it back into the shed, wheel off, jacked up the cab, and um, my father uh, made a seal for it. Uh, and that uh, that sorted it out, and uh, there was never any more, uh, never any more issue with it. Uh, and that was that. But that was another black mark against the uh, against the Pergo thirty eighty five, as far as my father was concerned. Um, after that, the uh, the tractor worked away, and uh, we were uh, carting uh, soil for the big shed project in the summer of two thousand and ten and two thousand spring two thousand and eleven. Um, and that's the shed that the tractors used to be in. They're now in the red shed, as we call it, but uh, they used to be in, in that big shed, and that's the shed that we were... You'll see some um, photos of it here, of it carting the soil away. So, um, even though the tractor was mechanically right, my father wasn't happy with it. And I mean, it looked good, it was mechanically right, he just wasn't happy with it. He didn't like the the noise that the engine uh, made, and although there was no signs of wear in the engine, it wasn't blowing out oil or burning oil. Um, the engine was good on it. Uh, he just he just didn't like it. And the engine in those tractors is a six cylinder Perkins Phaser engine. Um, it's about a, I think those tractors are about a hundred horsepower, and. Um, even though it's it's like smaller than 6290 that it replaced it, it was a very clumsy tractor compared to the, the, the 6290. Um, it, uh, I don't know why, it just, it, you know, six cylinders, 6290, six cylinder as well, but it's a clumsy tractor. And um, that was another mark against it. It just, uh, yeah, it was, you always had to take two cuts to get into gates and certain, and certain gates we had to make a lot bigger just to get this tractor in um, but whilst he didn't like it uh, I did have as I said at the start of the video I did have a soft spot for it um, because it was me that went to see it originally I found it went to McLeary's seen it um, brought my father along um, I helped fix it up and uh, I probably drove the tractor the most compared to anybody else on the farm so uh, yeah I, I did have a, and, and I do have a soft spot for the 3000 series, as I said earlier in the, uh, the video. But my father decided that he just wanted to get rid of it. And um, we looked at a 390T in Mickledary's at that time. And uh, that's probably spring 2000, no, sorry, that'll be summer 2011. And uh, but we decided uh, decided against it. There's a couple of pictures of Michael Derry's T90T, uh, hopefully on the screen. But we decided against it as uh, the T90T just wouldn't be able to handle the 1300 gallon tanker that we had on the steep slopes. And we do have a lot of steep slopes. My uncle, um, when he was using his T90T, said that he was just about able and sometimes had to go with half a load on the 1100 tanker. And he said, it was, you know, a 390T with a 1300 gallon tanker, no mission. So the three, the 3085 got a uh, stay of uh, execution. So a uh, 
A couple of uh, more years passed, uh, that's probably 2010 to 2013, and the trader was working away. Um, there wasn't much chat about changing it, it uh, was doing its job. And um, we had it uh, leveling soil, uh, it was on the tanker, uh, we had it on the old, uh, well I had it on the old tarp double chop for a bit of fun. Uh, cutting uh, cutting rushes, which you'll you'll uh, you'll see in the in this video, and um, and it even uh, it even stepped up when the uh, New Holland these contractors New Holland uh, gave up on the uh, round baler, and uh, we had it on the round baler for a few days. Finished our field and went and bailed a, a few other fields. However, this flagged a uh, issue with the hydraulic pump on the tractor which is something we kind of knew about um, and my father would mention on occasion you know his dislike for 3085 but they would need to do something uh, about the pump or else just sell it so uh, the issue was that the hydraulic pump on the tractor was worn it had been from the day we got it but it was just getting worse and worse and worse over the over the period of time we had it and when the oil warmed up uh, due to hard work, like running the baler, uh, it got thinner. And as a result of that, the, uh, the steering uh, wouldn't, uh, the steering was harder to turn on the tractor. And the warmer the oil got, the less efficient the oil flow would be through the pump and the harder the steering would get uh, to operate. So uh, the tractor, uh, the tractor wasn't really pushed that hard on our farm and because of that we didn't really notice it that much or, or we knew it was happening but we didn't really uh, it didn't really bother us that much um, but I'd say when it went on the baler uh, you could you could tell right away you know after a bit of hard work that it was it was struggling with the pump so uh, and that's when it became an issue. So it was hauled back in again uh, in uh, early 2013 uh, to have the pump replaced. Now, um, I'm going to stop talking for, uh, for a minute and uh, I've got some footage of the tractor uh, carting soil with the Woods trailer uh, in 2013. Uh, in this video, uh, we are filling in a hollow area on another field with the soil that came out of the big shed excavation. So uh, in fairness in this video, the 3085 uh, looks good on the woods, but uh, anyway. Right, I better jump in here and explain this bit because, um, yeah, no, the wheel did not fall off the Weeks trailer. It just disappeared into a wet spot and right into the axle. And that is the joys of the single axle trailers in fields with wet spots. Um, and that's one of the reasons uh, we changed it to a tandem axle trailer was uh, to prevent this happening because this happened a few times and another reason as I may have said in the trailer video that I did uh, was that it was forever going on its side because we used this trailer a lot to part soil and you had to tip it on the level or it was over so uh, that's two reasons why we um, changed it from a single axle to a tandem axle Okay, so a few more years 
passed from 2013 to 2015 without incident with the tractor and uh, it was during the tail end of the summer of 15 that a decision was made that 3085 would have to go. And we looked at a number of tractors uh, back then. We looked at a 6265, uh, a couple of 6265s um, that were in Michael Derry's again, and they were just deemed too small. I um, also looked at a 6180 that they had, um, which is a lovely tractor as you can see from the photograph. But I'm not a big fan of the 61 series and uh, so that, that, that wasn't a deal. Um, we decided that 6290 or 80 as uh, would be the tractor of choice as they had the power and weight to handle the tanker and some. So, uh, so that was kind of the road we were going down was 62 series, a 90 or an 80. Um, our 3085 sold to uh, another tractor dealer uh, in September 2015 and we actually got more money than what we paid for it and we still managed to keep the front weights so it wasn't a, wasn't a bad deal uh, and it was the right decision and um, because uh, the 6290 uh, is a completely different tractor and um, it's uh, yeah it was definitely was the right decision I mean talking to a number of people um, since and uh, they said yeah in their experience the 3085 was a was a dead old tractor um, so uh, yeah so that just seems to be the type of the tractor but anyway uh, as the 3085 uh, left the left the farm uh, after I think eight or nine years on the farm. The 6290 arrived, and well, that is another story. So, uh, so there you go, folks. That is the story of the 3085, the demise of the 3085, and uh, basically why it uh, why it left the farm. It was a tractor that my father just never liked, and. Um, yeah, and it, it did have a fair old time at the farm, it did last eight years, but it was nearly gone uh, twice, I think, uh, in those eight years. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, something different, and uh, I have to say, it's uh, a lot more comfortable sitting in the office here uh, doing this rather than, rather than being out on the farm, uh, being half frozen and getting soaked. So, uh, yeah. Maybe do more from in here. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much for the likes and subscriptions. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing the uh, the history of the 3085 and understanding why the tractor uh, eventually uh, left the farm. I hope I have earned a subscription or a like from you. And uh, as you know, I do love to hear from you. So if you have something to say, put it in the good old comments box and I will of course get back to you. So that's it, take care, bye bye.